Hi there, welcome to a Unit 2, Part 1 of our series on ITCSE Economics. In the classroom today, we are going to be learning about complementary goods, substitute goods, and the demand curve. If you haven't seen our previous video, Unit 1, Part 2, please click on the title above. Firstly, let's talk about substitute goods. Substitute goods are two alternative goods that can be used for the same purpose. Substitutes present the customer with alternative choices. If the price of one good increases, then demand for the substitute is likely to rise. Examples of substitutes are things like Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Butter or margarine, coffee or tea, bananas or apples. Now let's talk about complementary goods. Complementary goods are goods that are consumed together. As the price of one goes down or up, the demand for both the goods increase or fall. Examples of complementary goods are things like cars and petrol, shoes and shoe polish, computer hardware and computer software smartphones and apps. There is a relationship between complementary and substitute goods. This relationship is called cross elasticity of demand or XED. We will cover this in future videos when we talk about elasticities. Please subscribe, like and share, it really helps us out. And check out the quizzes in the description below and check into the Google Classroom if you've got any questions. Lastly for today, let's look at demand. The law of demand states that, all else being equal, as the price of a good increases, quantity demanded decreases. Conversely, as the price of a good decreases, quantity demanded increases. The law states that quantity purchased varies inversely with price. In other words, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. This occurs because of diminishing marginal utility. The demand curve is a graphical representation of the relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity demanded for a given period of time. In a typical representation, the price will appear on the left vertical axis and the quantity demanded on the horizontal axis. First, let's look at individual demand. For instance, this is an individual's demand for cupcakes. We can see at $1 a cupcake, he is willing and able to buy four. But at $3 a cupcake, he is willing and able to buy just one. Individual demand is how much of a product a consumer will buy at a given price. But this is different to market demand. In this example, at $1 a cupcake, the market is willing and able to buy 40, but this reduces to 5 cupcakes as the price increases to $4. Market demand is the sum of all the individual demand for a product at a given price. You may notice I use the words willing and able. This is important when looking at demand. You may be willing to buy something, but are you able? Do you have the money to buy it? I am willing to buy a Ferrari for instance, but sadly I am not able to. But maybe I am able, but really don't want something. Let's plot out the market demand for the cupcake market in this example. First you will see that the cost, in this case dollars, are on the y-axis. 
quantity, cupcakes are on the x-axis. The demand curve is downward sloping, starting off at $4 and 5 cupcakes and going down to $1 and 40 cupcakes. Now I want to look at demand curve shifts. Let's start with movement along the demand curve. A change in price causes movement along the curve. The higher the price of a product, there will be less demanded for it. If the price rises, then demand will fall. This is known as contraction in demand. The lower the price of a product, the more it will be demanded. If the price falls, then demand will rise. This is known as an extension in demand. Let's look at the demand curve. A movement along the demand curve always caused by price. We can see that if we move left along the curve, an increase in price to P1, the quantity demanded falls to Q1. Conversely, if we move right along the curve, a decrease in price to P2, the quantity demanded increases to Q2. Now let's look at shifts of the demand curve. A shift of the demand curve represents an increase or a decrease of demand at a given price level. This may be because of a change in consumers' incomes, a change in price of competing products, changes in tastes and fashion, or seasonal factors such as weather. Let's look at the demand curve again. We can move the demand curve up or increase the demand. Uh, we can see that for the same quantity of goods, the prices increase from P0 to P1. If we move the demand curve down or decrease the demand, for the same quantity of goods, we see the price falls from P0 to P2. Demand is based on the actual ability of a consumer to purchase the product, not just what they would like but can't afford, a sports car or jewellery, etc. This is called effective demand. Demand curves slope down from left to right. This is because the higher the price, the more of the consumer's income must be spent on it and the more satisfaction they must get from it to justify the opportunity cost. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe, like and share. We hope to see you next time.